and welcome. You're watching Head to Head with UETV. I am Oles Gerdyuk. Ukrainians working abroad add to Ukraine's treasury almost 3 billion US dollars annually. These figures have been presented in the latest study on labor migration done by CEDOS, an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank which is based in Ukraine. To dig more into the topic, we welcome to the studio one of CEDOS experts. Joining us is Andriy Solotko. Hello and thank you for coming. So, Mr. Solotko, almost 3 billion US dollars. This is pretty impressive, pretty big figure. Um, how do you think, how important are these financial contributions for the Ukrainian economy? Well, if we compare with our GDP, I will say that it's important because it makes less or more 4 5 percent of the, our national GDP. And it depends on the year, but mostly it, each year it's the same number. And it's not only 3 billion, uh, 3 billion is only in, in cash, but we have one, about 1 billion in, in goods. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's uh, food, clothes, something like that. And, uh, well, it's important because um, it's a huge amount of money and it's uh, foreign currency, uh, but the problem is that uh, the migrants are mostly in investing in uh, their children, in uh, their households, but yeah, their uh, this money doesn't work for, for economy. They do not work for economy. Yeah. But still they circle in the country. If, uh, for example, if this is the house and they need to fix and repair the house, the, the money yeah, research, are yeah, research uh, shows that they're trying to invest in some long-term solutions, such mm -hmm. as uh, but housing, not in business. Yeah, um, very often education for their children, <clears throat> very often uh, they invest somehow in economy, but uh, it's mostly some local economy in their village to repair, for example, school or to, to church, something like that, uh, roads. So do they invest in roads? Uh, well, in infrastructure repair, they invest, but uh, it's very few examples. And there is very famous example which happened maybe a half year ago. Mass media were reporting that uh, uh, in some village in um, the Karpatia region, they invested in road, and uh, because they were waiting, they were demanding the local authorities to to repair the road, and they did it. And so we we uh, have information that uh, well. Somehow they invest either in roads or very often some heating, public lighting, but um, yes. it's only in very local, local level. What is Ukrainian uh, policy towards uh, immigration? Is it about support or prevention? Well, I would say that um, well, there is no Ukrainian policy. Very often, the Ukrainian authorities speak that uh, we should support migrants. It's very important, but uh, well, uh, today I. I would say that we don't have any um, program on the national uh, level of cooperation with, with Ukrainians who live abroad. And it's a problem because the numbers uh, from year to year become bigger and bigger. And today we have only in Poland, like uh, we have uh, at, uh, at one moment there are more than 800,000 people who are working in Poland. It's really huge, huge numbers. And uh, we see that uh, the migrants, like a few years ago, we were speaking that migrants who are working in Europe are mostly from the Western Ukraine. And today, if we look at the data, uh, people more from even center and south Ukrainian, uh, Ukraine are leaving for Europe. And uh, what I find also important is that uh, the numbers of people who are working in Russia uh, become um, small, less, 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 less it's and decreasing. it's because of economical problem in Russia, because of political situation, and of course because of Russian currency that is weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you mentioned that Ukraine doesn't have policy, but still Ukraine aims to support um, emigrants, right? What is lacking in this process? Are there any obstacles, maybe by the currency um, transfer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the very very important obstacle is this currency tr uh, transfers because uh, uh, well the international monetary funds recommends that uh, the um, tax paid by the for, for the transfer should be a, a, about one person today it's a little bit more to three and two or three percent yeah it depends on the bank but. Um, 
somehow it's it's like huge 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 numbers than than it should be and uh, the other problem is because of this people are trying to to use some unofficial way to transfer money like this so this so-called buses and which where, is not safe. yeah well, it's not safe and uh, the other problem is that uh, um, the government should implement some program to uh, to push people invest in this infrastructure we were speaking in the beginning. How could we develop this? Who has to work on this? How do you see this idea working well, in Ukraine? Uh, it was discussed after Maidan and uh, mostly the Minister of uh, Economy was working on this and they even had some kind of a concept of, of the program but it was not uh, developed and the government changed and uh, I think that uh, here we should have uh, like very uh, strong cooperation on three levels, on the level of local authorities, on the government and of course of the migrants, because very often nobody, uh, nobody um, asks them. And uh, for example, like three years ago, the, the Minister of, uh, of Economy, he said that migrants are ready to, to invest, but then our research showed that they are not ready they're because not. they see that there is corruption, there is some economical problems, mm -hmm. there high taxes, etc. So they are afraid of risk. Yeah. But still, do you have an idea of some approximate figure? How many Ukrainian migrants are there in the whole world? Uh, well, if we speak about uh, Ukrainian migrants as Ukrainians who have Ukrainian citizenship, yes. we can speak about up to five million people. And uh, but the problem is that uh, it includes people who um, who still possess the Ukrainian pass passport after the. Uh, after the Soviet Union, but never have been living in Ukraine. But uh, people who left Ukraine and now is living abroad, working, it's about two and a half million. Two and a half million. Yeah. Well, that's also pretty impressive. How competitive are they on the labor, labor market abroad? I would say that they are rather competitive because... Uh, well, they are competitive. They are say. competitive, yeah, because of uh, their education and skills. And we see this, well, the, the, the example of Poland is very good because uh, it's a huge number. And we see how Poland is interested in Ukrainian migrants because of uh, lack of the labor force. And even they are changing their laws for, from, uh, uh, from next year. Uh, they uh, will let Ukrainian migrants migrants to work nine months and today they can only stay in Poland six months so we, have, we see this interest because uh, it's also very good for these countries for, for where, they are, uh, where there are Ukrainian migrants because they should not uh, invest in them I mean in their education in their and, uh, they, and Ukrainian migrants cre create uh, um, uh, they, they like for the, uh, the, the GDP push the ADP and uh, as well as they cre create the, 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 the um, uh, labor places, what mm -hmm. is important. But at the same time in Poland a lot of Ukrainians complain on the way they are treated. There were a lot of cases, um, such cases, and how would you comment on that? How would you explain that? Uh, well, it's... Uh well, it's very common problem for mostly for um, all countries where there are the migrants. We can see this in France towards the migrants from the Maghreb countries. We can see this in the US towards the Mexicans. And uh, the problem is that, uh, well, today in, in Poland, um, there is this kind of uh, the government, which is in, in, uh, has the, the power, the problem is that they are it's rather conservative, and the, our relationship with Poland is rather hot. And because of this, because of this, the situation is is like heating from inside. But in general, uh, our research uh, sa uh, shows that uh, Ukrainians uh, well feel rather good in Poland, and these cases which happened and. Very often, some crime is beaten, or something like that. Uh, they're happening, but I think this is because of the social media and uh, mass media. Mm -hmm. It's really spreading very, it's spreading very, very yeah, fast. Very fast. Are they paid uh, fairly? Uh, yes, they are paid fairly since uh, there was some, uh, they, they, they got uh, a little bit less than Polish citizenship uh, before 2017, but now uh, they, yeah, they are paid uh, um, equally, but uh, they say that, uh, well, we, well, they earn about 700 euros a month, mm -hmm. it's an average, 
and uh, they said that it's that minimum that they could um, that will let them to to return to Ukraine if, the, for example, somebody proposes the same salary here. You mentioned that Poland if, is facilitating the procedure of getting legal residency and employment mm -hmm. in in Poland. Uh, what about the other countries? What is the dominant policy abroad towards Ukrainian migrants? Uh, well, in Europe, it's uh, well they are rather welcome. I mean uh, that uh, such well, traditional countries of Ukrainian immigration as uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Germany, they are ready to um, to invite Ukrainians, uh, and so we can see this, that the, uh, that policy towards Ukrainian is rather like I would say soft because, for example after a um, defined term of, of uh, work in Italy or in Spain, Ukrainians can receive the pensions there, mm -hmm. what is important. So we're talking about the legal employment, the legal. right? Um, according to European Union laws, mm -hmm. it is pretty hard in Europe to get a job if you are not a citizen of European Union, basically if you are Ukrainian in this case. What countries tend to facilitate this process for, for Ukrainians, for example? Well, you mentioned Poland. Are yeah. there any others? Yeah, it's mostly the countries from uh, Eastern and uh, Central Europe. I mean, Czech Republic, Slovakia, then uh, as well Germany, as well uh, Italy, Portugal. But yeah, there are still the countries uh, mostly from the Northern Europe where it's rather difficult to get there and to get a job. Mm -hmm. And has the profile of uh, the Ukrainian immigrant changed within years? Yeah, it's changed in uh, the sense I mentioned the geography, that there are more and more Ukrainians from the East going to Europe, and then as well the age. Uh, mostly young Ukrainian goes, and the average age of uh, to today's Ukrainian migrants is, is 35. Mm -hmm. and are they moving away permanently, or do they tend to have this temporary job? Yeah, it's mostly temporary job, uh, and uh, mostly it's six months there, six months in Ukraine. And as well, uh, research uh, shows that they want to return to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They don't want to stay there. But what is the point that is bringing young people in Ukraine to this emigration process? Well, what are the fears of, of, yeah. of Ukrainians? Uh, the, main, uh, the main reason of, yeah, of leaving Ukraine is uh, economical problems. And uh, as well, uh, um, if you speak about uh, it's economical, purely economical problems for, for maybe for the elderly generation, but for the youngster, it's as well some hopes. Difficulty to find a job? Yeah, oh. some hopes they had after Maidan that there should be changes, that it, the life would become much more easy, and it uh, had not. And uh, they have this problem of uh, employment, yeah, of uh, corruption, of economical problems, so they try to, to find themselves. Mm -hmm. So for sure there is a level of trust involved in all of this process. Yeah. Um, how much do Ukrainians trust in Ukraine? Uh, well, it, they, they trust in Ukraine as a project, uh, yes, as a state, but uh, there are problems in, um, on, the, on the level of the trust to, to the, the institutions. As, but it's from every year, mostly from uh, one uh, research from uh, to the other, it shows that there is this lack of trust for to, to the president, government, parliament. But still, they always mostly trust uh, the church. And what is new after the war, it's the army. Mm -hmm. The level of trust is really high. But in general, um, how positive are Ukrainians about Ukraine's future? about Ukraine's reforms, maybe? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're positive and mostly 80, 87 percent believe in Ukraine. And what is like, what was a very su good surprise, yeah, surprise for me. They believe, uh, but uh, they demand uh, faster reforms and faster changes. Well, let's hope that our belief has an effect. And thank you so much for this conversation. Good luck. That was Andriy Solodko, expert at CEDOS. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Oles Gerdjuk. Goodbye.